Welcome to Match of the Day, and I should warn you not to blink for the next 50 minutes because you'll miss a goal. It's that kind of programme. First, we'll show you Liverpool against Newcastle United. Don't reach outside, four the other way. Good save. Next, it's Oxford United on the threshold of the First Division against Oldham Athletic. Again, Oxford able to keep on the pressure. And Brock... Aldridge! Everton march on to go ten points clear at the top of the first division and send Stoke down to the second. Spurs slip up at home yet again. And off the field, Chelsea chairman Ken Bates says sports minister Neil McFarlane should resign. So it's over to Anfield where Liverpool take on Newcastle United. And although the points may not look particularly important, either side might well be grateful for them before the season ends. Your commentator is Barry Davis. <laughs> To retain their European Cup is now Liverpool's cause. And the confidence and the voice of the Cup is unimpaired. The motto here has always been to look forward, and today that means points against Newcastle for a high enough league position as insurance of a 22nd season in Europe. And Joe Fagan makes changes in his team. Kevin McDonnell is left out. Sammy Lee returns in midfield where he's joined by Mark Lawrenson. Gary Gillespie plays in his proper position at the back. And Steve Nicholl replaces the injured Jim Beglin at fullback. Newcastle also need the points. A midweek home defeat by Coventry has left them rather too close to the relegation zone for comfort. But today they welcome back their new England man, Chris Waddle, who has missed the last four games because of a knee injury. Otherwise, their team is unchanged. The referee on a fine sunny afternoon is Gilbert Napthine of Loughborough. Well, the last time Newcastle won here at Anfield, their scorers were a hat-trick from George Robledo and the other goal scored by the late Ernie Taylor. 35 years ago since they've had a victory here. And the free kick given, although Glenn Roder's head was quite a long way down and Sammy Lee is not the tallest player on the park. I must say we have a rollicking atmosphere because Newcastle supporters are never reticent about making themselves heard. And there are quite a few here this afternoon. Martin Thomas. George Riley, ex of Watford. Well watched by Alan Hansen. Nickel. Walk. Good play by Nickel. Anderson shut the door. Sammy Lee to take the corner. Nickel in close attendance. Lawrence and up wide of the penalty spot. Two on the near post there. Or in the near post area. Just reached by Riley. Neil. Gone for the return. Douglas played it beautifully. Covered by Kenny Walton. Gillespie. Some concerted pressure now by Liverpool. Walk, good climb, but no contact. Chris Waddle offering himself again at right back. Riley showed far too much of that. Waddle once more, and Beardsley is onside. A real opportunity for him, the ball will come down. Good challenge by Gillespie. But the problem for him was the ball would not come down, it hung a bit in the air. And Gillespie made up the ground to get in the challenge. And in the end, Bruce Grobola was left quite unconcerned. Well on by Dalglish. 
goalkeeper, one touch goalkeeper. Beardsley, Brown, Megson seems to find a few gaps, says Gary Megson. Well, hell indeed. Low cross. It went in front of Pat Hurd and was very, very well claimed by Bruce Grobbler. Waddle. Roda. It's better control from Riley. Free kick given against Walk. Four forward. Riley. And one by Hansen, and Neil got a knock on the bridge of the nose, it seemed. Beardsley. Waddle. Still three Newcastle players in the area, and Neil down outside of it. Oh, he did well to get the cross in, and nobody coming in on the far side. It was a really good cross by Chris Waddle. with one fullback out of the play it was a little surprising that Newcastle didn't think they could take a chance and get somebody to come up on the far post but Neil in a real mess he got a knock on the bridge of the nose as he went out with Riley and Hansen came in behind and won the ball I don't think Neil was too impressed with the challenge it's a real Terry Downs Very neat turn by Walsh. Daglish. Hansen. Walk. Well, they backed into McCrew and it worked. Lee, everything now to his left. Good cover by McCreary, but here's Doug Leash. Waddle. Nicely done. Pat Hurd. Anderson's getting forward on this attack. This could be a bit of a surprise here. They've got a man over far side two, and Riley in the middle. And couldn't find the finish. Nice attack that by Newcastle. Neil ended it as he went in to challenge George Riley. <laughs> Liverpool may moan about Newcastle's defensive tactics, but they should remember how effective it had been, or nearly effective, a couple of their breakaways. Waddle, plenty of time to tell the goalkeeper where he was going to play it. And the end of a thoroughly unproductive half for Liverpool. Phil Neal coming off for needed treatment. He must be disappointed about the knock that he got and by his team's performance which during, during the 45 minutes failed to make Martin Thomas make anything other than a claim or a reach for the ball. He didn't have a save to make. At half-time, it's nil-nil. The Newcastle supporters bathed in sunshine and would doubt this point to the fact that they had the two best chances of the first period. And the news of the opposition captain, Phil Neal, is that he has 
not surprisingly, a suspected broken nose. Newcastle have lost the last eight visits here and failed to score on the last five. The home supporters will be anxious that Liverpool come back after the disappointments of the week. So they need to ensure this place in the UEFA Cup. Rhoda did well to spin because uh, Walt was looking for the back pass. Thomas took over in February from Carr. On by Riley. Waddle. Hansen. Neil Gillespie. Free kick against McCreary. Push walk before Walk managed to get to the ball. Douglas. Oh, beautifully done. Lovely goal by John Walk. Number 25 of the season. Brings relief to the Liverpool supporters. And it really was quite beautifully flicked over the advancing goalkeeper. Douglas's free kick. Walk's flick. His 25th goal of the season. Liverpool lead by one to nothing. Fifty-seven minutes gone. And rather more noise now from the cop end. Douglas. Having a better second half Douglas than he had first, which could be said of one or two Liverpool players. Whelan. And Brown throws his legs in the nick of time. Rhoda. Hansen. Douglas, she's onside, no question about it. And Gillespie scores. And he's all smiles. And not surprisingly, that's his first for Liverpool. They all looked at the linesman. There was no question in my mind that Dalglis was onside. And they looked again as the pass was played. And Gillespie, in the opinion of the linesman, had come from the back. And scores his first goal to give Liverpool a 2-0 lead. Goal coming in the 69th minute before a crowd this afternoon of 34,733. Now Waddle, a real chance for him. And he doesn't take it. Well, there are 20 minutes and a bit left. But it would be no great surprise if at the end that was seen to be Newcastle's last chance of getting back into the match. And Newcastle want to make their substitute. Neil McDonald to come on. And he replaces Gary Megson. Anderson Beardsley Lawrenson Nickel don't reach outside, four the other way. Good save. Deliberate attempt by Kenny Douglas to find the top corner. And it was watched with uh, great surety by uh, Martin Thomas. 
different corner. Walsh. Beardsley. It's the first time I think we've seen him make a run since he had that opportunity early in the first half. McDonald's. And he tries to catch Grobola off his line. Simply gave Grobola an opportunity to show his agility. Walsh. Douglas is enjoying himself in the second half. I don't think he enjoyed the first period. And Walsh is onside. That's number three. Newcastle totally split. And all the time in the room because he'd made the run from the back. And Newcastle were all over the place and nobody was in company with Paul Walsh. Waddle. And Neil McDonald found an enormous amount of room in the six yard box with three defenders sort of standing around. But the goal made for him by Chris Waddle, which adds to the delight of the Newcastle supporters for whom it will only be a consolation. Just won the championship. Good play by Neil. Douglas. Anderson. Oh, what a different second half. From in truth, a rather turgid opening 45 minutes. and noise since their side scored. Oh, what a different second half. Newcastle can look back on the chances that went away in the first half. By the time they got another one, they were two goals down. The goals coming from John Walk, Gary Gillespie, and Paul Walsh and Phil Neal, who goes off to check whether he has a broken nose, will be very pleased that his side who failed to produce anything like their real form in the first 45 minutes, certainly did so in the second 45. And it brings a final score of Liverpool 3, Newcastle United 1. Well, they are determined to enjoy the better moments of their side's performance. They are what real support is all about, surely. Well, not a surprising result, I suppose, but Liverpool made heavy weather of overcoming Newcastle's stubbornness in the first half. And there might have been a slight hangover from their cup defeat, and unusually they're chasing only one trophy. But they'll know that the way for them to be at their best in the European Cup is to stay sharp in the league. Bob. Liverpool's win lifts them up two places to fourth, but the championship is as good as it on its way to their Merseyside rivals Everton, who tonight stand ten points clear at the top of Division 1. And they even have matches to spare on their nearest challengers. Everton won 2-0 at bottom club Stoke. Manchester United play tomorrow at Luton, while Spurs continued their slide, beaten at home 3-2 by Ipswich. In the fight for European places next season, Southampton and Forest both won at home, but Arsenal struggled again, losing 1-0 at Queen's Park Rangers. And Chelsea can't be ruled out. They were winners at West Bromwich. After that match, Chelsea chairman Ken Bates called on Sports Minister Neil McFarlane to resign following his criticism of Chelsea's controversial plans to erect an electric fence at Stamford Bridge. 
Asked if he was saying no minister to Mr McFarlane, the outspoken Chelsea chairman replied, I'm saying get stuffed minister, is there a minister? At the bottom, Stoke are down and it's not looking too healthy for Coventry or Sunderland, both beaten today. And Milk Cup winners Norwich can't feel entirely safe after a 3-1 home defeat by Leicester. The two winners today, Ipswich and West Ham. Looking ahead to Europe, Ian Rush has a 50-50 chance of being fit for Liverpool's European Cup semi-final against Panathinaikos. And Everton hope to have Derek Mountfield back for their Cup Winners' Cup semi against Bayern Munich. Finally, news tonight that Mick Mills, Southampton's 36-year-old defender, is planning to step out of First Division football at the end of the season. Southampton manager Laurie McMenemy said that Mick will be looking for a managerial or coaching job and may continue to play as well. Now it's the turn of the Cannon League's second division and the game between Oxford United, favourites for the championship, and Oldham Athletic, who with four wins in March gave Joe Royal the Manager of the Month award and thrust themselves clear of the relegation zone. Your commentator is Tony Gubber. As Oxford United take the final steps towards the first division, they'll be listening for the support from the terraces because there's an unusual complaint in today's match programme from manager Jim Smith who says that he and the players are puzzled by the lack of vocal support and that the second half of Wednesday's 3-0 home victory over Huddersfield was like playing in a morgue. Certainly one has to wonder how both the crowd and this quaint little manor ground with its 14,500 capacity are going to cope with regular First Division football next season. Well, hopes that Billy Hamilton would return to lead Oxford's attack have faded. He's gone back to the specialist after the recent cartilage operation. And with Jeremy Charles also injured, it's another chance for Mark Jones to show what he can do at number nine. It's the same Oxford team that beat Huddersfield in midweek. And Oldham are also unchanged from their team, beaten 1-0 at home last Saturday by Shrewsbury. Brendan O'Callaghan still has a thigh strain. And number eight, Tony Henry, will operate as a sweeper. Chairman Robert Maxwell, who's made no secret of the fact that he thinks facilities here aren't really fit for First Division football, and wants the local council to provide a new ground. The referee today, Brian Stevens of Stonehouse in Gloucestershire. Oldham in the blue shirts, start the match, attacking the goal to the right. Against an Oxford team playing the second of a sequence of three home games in eight days that should clinch that promotion. pitch very very heavy despite the hot temperatures of the last few days it's rained all morning Langham. Aldridge Jones. Now it's three on two. There's McDermott on his inside. Wasn't a good ball. Brock! Oh, what a smasher! Kevin Brock's seventh goal of the season, and didn't he strike it well? It looked as though the impetus of that attack had broken down when Oldham pulled players back quickly. But that ball found Brock sprinting in on the left side and he hit it right in between the keeper and the post. Well, now the Oxford fans find the voices that Jim Smith has been appealing for that he hopes will carry his team not only into the first division, but also to the second division championship as well. And that would be a bit of history, because no league side has won the third division championship and the second division championship in successive seasons. But Oxford could do just that. And Brock this time back helping in defence. Tony Henry, one of several ex-Manchester City players in this Oldham side.
McDermott. Langan coming forward. Inside to Truick. Cut out by Ward. Truick can try again. Roger Palmer for Oldham. Only as far as Hebbard. Bobby McDonald. He's got a lot of space in front of him. Doesn't need to play it too early. Finds Jones. Brock. And McDonald. Oh, what a poor kick by Gorham. He's put Jones in possession, who's only the keeper to beat. Finds Aldridge. Is that 29? It is. No offside. What a disastrous kick by Andy Gorham. Straight to Mark Jones, a real disaster for the keeper. Jones might have gone forward himself, unselfishly gave it to Aldridge, whose nose for goal is known well in the second division. His 29th goal of the season, the man they call the Ian Rush of Division 2. Now here come Oxford again. Henry. Speculative ball for Quinn to chase. Full back finds McDonough. Cut out by Briggs. Langan. And now McDermott. This is Hebbard. Again, Oxford able to keep on the pressure. And Brock. Aldridge! John Aldridge, the point-blank header, turned over brilliantly by Gorham. This time, Gorham gathers safely. Now Ward. Looks for Donaghy on his right. Finds him inadvertently. Now Maguire. To Palmer. Palmer has another go. Oh, and a good shot. Roger Palmer struck it well. Just about six inches wide of that post, though. Although Hardwick wouldn't have known that when he dived. by McDermott to Aldridge. Mike Jones plays it into touch. Oxford's throw taken by Truick. Langan asked rather a lot of John Truick. This attempted pass was cut out by Brock. Hebbard. Crowd having a go at Hebbard, who looked a bit casual as he was beaten by Palmer. Ward. 
Back to McDonough. Shotton. Oh, it's giveaway time. Parker. That'll be a corner if it goes. Shot on the man who kept it in, giving Oldham the throw. Ward. Maguire. Good ball. Ward. Truick. Well, John Truick kept his eye on it. Had Palmer lurking behind, had to be certain to get to that. shot by Quinn and I think it hit Parker Quinn coming in fast it seemed goal bound and struck his own player Derek Parker and then went wide Truick McDermott on his outside but tries to find Jones Mark Jones wasn't far away from that. And Gorham must have got a touch. Because Oxford win the corner. And again, the heart of that Oldham defence beginning to creak. This is Ward. In a very good position there is Ward. He's dispossessed by McDonald. Not gone out. Quinn. Rock. Jones was offside. Well, Jim Smith said before the match that Mark Jones was conscious that he's really playing for a place in this team. And he's had an outstanding first half. He's been involved in everything that Oxford have done and has looked really lively. Bobby McDonald back to his keeper and Parker might get there. He has. Hardwick's out of goal, but he's got back now. Oh, Quinn had to be. And Oxford will have to blame themselves for that. Well, Jim Smith will have some things to say to his defenders in the dressing room at half time. They've put themselves under dreadful pressure there. Hardwick came off his line, was out of position, and Mike Quinn of Oldham. Puts his team back into the match with his 16th goal of the season. <laughs> Quinn. Maguire. Ali Donaghy. Parker. Ward. Parker, some good play here by Oldham. Oh, Palmer! Well, another bright bit of football by Oldham. Playing steadily, keeping possession, working their way forward. And Roger Palmer wasn't far away from that. Hardwick had to be brave as he went down at the feet of the Oldham winger. So, the end of an eventful first half. Oxford ahead, two goals to one. Brock scoring the first. Aldridge getting the second. And then Quinn putting Oldham back in the match just before half-time. This is one of the grounds where the policemen get to watch the match, rather than looking for troublemakers in the crowd, and even read the programme, and perhaps the manager's notes. en route to the first division and it's only 23 years ago that they were in the Southern League and gained league status in 1962 as replacements for Accrington Stanley. So what a remarkable achievement it will be for Oxford and their manager Jim Smith when they get promoted as surely they will at the end of this season, possibly as champions. McDermott, oh good play by McDermott, Got around Alec Jones easily.
cut out by Truick. McDermott. It's off Palmer. Hold by Henry. Parker. Oh, and that rebounded into Maguire's face and certainly would have stunned him. And that's a corner, says the linesman. Alden look around in some disbelief. But it's Brock who's gone across to take it as Hebbard goes forward. On by Hebbard. Jones. Truick. Nice back heel by Aldridge. Just Truick. McDermott in support. This is Brock. Bobby McDonald! Bobby McDonald's sixth goal of the season, and he ought to thank John Aldridge because it was that very cheeky back heel to find Truick that enabled Oxford to keep the pressure on, eventually get in the cross, it went across the face of the goal, was knocked back, and Bobby McDonald, the fullback, was there to head a simple goal. And that perhaps will make amends for that dreadful back pass just before half-time. Langan. Truick. Dermot. Hebbard forward to find Langan. First time to Aldridge, who just failed to get a touch. But Oxford are now beginning to flow. 3-1 up, within sight of the first division and dreaming of the second division title. And Oxford will take this opportunity to make a substitution. And it looks like Mark Jones, the player who's going to come off, and he deserves a warm round of applause. Peter Rhodes-Brown, the former Chelsea player, the man who comes on. <laughs> Hebbard knocked it down for Aldridge. What a good goal! That came out of Oxford's own half, played forward by Shotton. A high ball, Hebber jumped highest and played it down perfectly for Aldridge. And didn't he look just like Ian Rush as he turned and hit that? Gorham just got a hand to it, but couldn't keep it out. Four-one to Oxford. to follow the three goals they scored on Wednesday against Huddersfield. And with Shrewsbury, the visitors here on Wednesday night, it's a sequence that will surely put Oxford in the first division. The voice of enthusiasm lifting Oxford to the dizzy heights of Division One. Back to Barlow. Shotten. Just cut out by Palmer. Oh, Henry took his eye off it. Well, even the sun's come out to shine on Oxford's afternoon as Aldridge goes forward again. Gorham out of his area to clear. Rhodes Brown was fouled by Alex Jones. Hebbard chips it forward. McDonald, they're queuing up the Oxford players. Brock. Rhodes Brown. One fisted away by Gorham. And Ward's happy to kick it anywhere. Only as far as Langham. Oh, yes! It's a hat 
hat-trick for Aldridge of the highest quality. What a player this man is. He'd salute the cross from Langen. Mark Ward, the man who didn't really kick it far enough away. But you can't give Aldridge a sight of goal. And that takes the season's total to 31. And some first division defences will tremble to face him next season. Quinn. Obstructed as he tried to wriggle himself for position. So in the last moments of the match, Oldham with this free kick. Right on the edge of Oxford's area. All the Oxford players back in their own half as Ward takes the free kick. And then at the post, came back to Maguire. Ward's free kick seemed to fly off a defender, hit the post and came back to Mick Maguire who gets Oldham's second goal of a match that they have no hope of winning. And that's Mick Maguire's first goal for Oldham in his 17th match since joining them from Barnsley. As the whistle goes to end the match in which Oxford have sounded a warning to the First Division. They're on their way. If the results have gone their way this afternoon, they might be up. A brilliant at-trick from John Aldridge. And there'll be celebrations at Oxford tonight, and certainly on Wednesday, when promotion will be clinched. The final score, Oxford United 5, Oldham Athletic 2. Good old-fashioned football at Oxford United under Jim Smith. If you get your crosses in, you provide goal-scoring chances, and if somewhere in the centre is a player with an appetite for scoring and the talent to do it, you win games. Such a player, John Aldridge spoke to Tony Gubber. Well, the manager won't accept that you're promoted yet, but do you think you are? Well, not until exactly we got the right points, like, and uh, that, but uh, I think, you know, Barring a disaster, we are promoted, like, yeah. Well, we'll assume that you're up. Yeah. How do you fancy those first division defences next season? Uh, obviously, it's going to be very hard, like, you know, but uh, the way we play, especially at home, we, we get our teams early on and, and we disrupt them a bit, and the atmosphere is very good and it's a tight little ground, and I think that adds to the excitement, you know. Are, are you looking forward to the challenge? No, oh, I very much so, yeah. Uh, it'd be great. Now, you're likened to Ian Rush all the time, and there was more than enough evidence today to confirm that. How do you feel about it? Well, I think that's a, that's a great compliment, like, you know, from anyone to, to say that on the pitch, because uh, he's a different class player, like, and uh, he's noted throughout the world, so it can't be bad. Which of those three gave you most <coughs> pleasure today? I think the third one, because it's the attic goal, like. Only as far as Langham. Oh, yes! All the signatures? Yep, they're all there, yeah, Tom. Have you got many of those? I've got a few, yeah. I give them all away, though, to relatives, and my dad's got a couple in that way. Like. You better get a big cabinet, because the way things are looking, you might get a few more. Uh, that'd be nice, so, yeah, that'd be great. Well, Oxford now need just four points from their last five games to complete their rise from third division to first in successive seasons. They stay four points clear of Birmingham with the game in hand, and nine ahead of Blackburn and Manchester City. Those top four there all won, but Portsmouth slipped up to one at Crystal Palace and dropped from third to fifth. The top three clubs in Division 3 all won, so Bradford City also need four points now to make certain of promotion. They beat Burnley 3-2, while Hull won at Newport and Millwall saw off promotion rivals Bristol Rovers by the same score, 1-0. The other Bristol team, City, kept alive their hopes with a 4-0 win over Preston and go above their neighbours on goal difference, but Gillingham's ambitions took a knock with a surprising 3-2 home defeat by Bolton. No change in the fourth division with the top three all winning at home, but Berry faulted with a goalless home draw with Mansfield. Back to the action, three more goals to enjoy as Celtic kept up the pressure on leaders Aberdeen at the top of the Scottish Premier Division. Their opponents at Parkhead were St Mirren, commentator Archie McPherson, Celtic in possession. Bounce. Mortimer Cloud. The reverse pass for Clare. Feels for a penalty and has been given... 
despite the protests and the agonized look in the referee's eyes, quite clearly handling the penalty kick to be taken by Aiken. Oh. Straight through Murray. Here's Burns. Mugabe running onto it. Great chance for Mugabe. He's done it. He took that excellently. Johnson on the run, and so is Mugabe. Oh, a hand. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. I think it's the same man. It's winning. I think he's been afflicted by disease. And he comes again. Oh. We'll be back next Saturday evening at 9.45, by which time Jim Smith, I think, will have opened the champagne to celebrate Oxford United making history by winning a first division place thanks to goals like these. Good night.